football at all against Dublin. We performed for about 30 minutes against Dublin and then we just absolutely fell asunder, you know, in the second half, especially when Clancy went off the team, just seemed to stop playing. But we have worked quite a bit since then and we have done a lot of different things with the team in the meantime and we're hoping that we'll perform a lot better today. Uh, in, now that we're playing the All-Ireland Champion setting, it's a great opportunity for the players who played in Crow Park last day to really perform because today is a big, big game. And of course, Tyrone are really going for three, two in a row, which hasn't been done since Cork did it way back a number of years ago. So I'd say they're well motivated and seemingly they have most of their players who were injured back as well. So we're looking forward to a very good game of football today. In your newspaper article this morning, you talked about the fact that it could be your last day with Leash. Have you even thought about that seriously? Well, I have made up my mind like that when uh, this championship is over for, uh, with Leash, that I'm finished in Leash and that's it. Like I have made up my mind about that. So I'll be able to rest for a while and maybe play a little bit of golf and what have you. But I suppose I'll be still involved in football somewhere or another. No doubt. After that abject display against Dublin two weeks ago, well, the full backline from last year has been reconvened. It's continue their challenge with another touched up side, as you've been hearing. For all that, Mickey Hart has plenty of quality at his disposal from John Three at stake. That's the round where all the winning team. John Ganey getting the match underway. And it's Brendan Quigley straight away trying to set up the first attack for Leash. Spills away out of the defence once again here towards back on a pitch where he last played 15 months ago. That was the thing up here for Ross Monnelly having a go from distance, but that one is just to the right. Then Hope, Martin Penrose, lively character. A little bit of open space here. Kevin Hughes coming up for it. Back from suspension and he knocks it over the bar. Good start by back in 2003 when Mickey Hart first led the Red Hand team to their Sam Maguire Cup win. But somehow to Billy Sheehan, the Kerry man. Again coming in from that wing where Russ Monnelly had the first opportunity a little while. Nicely forward once again here. It's Raymond Mulgrew, the minor, from a couple of years back. Spills back. Nice ball in here. Again they go to Sheehan and he puts it over the bar and he might have had a goal. Billy Sheehan getting in here moving inside but he was going for the big one really they go precisely down towards McCormack trying to turn inside Brian McCormack laid off towards him once again big effort Billy Sheehan with the kick it's much much better from Leach to move the ball up quicker to defense and Billy Sheehan kicked a good point there from and McCormack fed into the corner once again towards Bino this time Going low, nice little layoff here for Tom Kelly coming through. Awkward angle, great kick, great point. Good leadership displayed here by Tom Kelly. Yeah, and again, a score coming from, from Leash, uh, playing with, really with two inside forwards, Brian Mac McDonald and Lee Sheehan. Quick look around to see who's motoring. Coming through here is Noel Garvin, disappointed against Dublin. Oh, that was very wayward. Ditch to Leash. Brian McCormack. Monolly once again. Again, they go to the centre half back, Tom Kelly. That's Chris Conway having a pot. And that one drops to the left. McCullough angling this one, dropping it short, however. And first, nice ball ahead once again to Ross Monolly. 20 metres out from an angle, lets it fly. And that delights the Leash fans here. That's Ross Kelly played this one for starters, or down to Chris Conway. Finally to Ross Monolly. Fabulous score. And it's four points to one. Yeah, and a great, a great score, but it all came from uh, Colin McCullough failing to kick the ball. Old. Up against Cormac McGinley. The older of the McGinleys didn't quite curl in that time. Him. Trying to knock it away from him. Mulligan fouled. Free. Very assured. McGinley, as a loose player, it's Kavanagh. And it's fisted and it's put over the bar. Good point. Us once again, just why they are champions, although they may be badly struck for injuries to so many of their players. Billy Sheehan now, the Kerry man. He'll have an eye on tomorrow's monster final in Killarney, but today it's all about progression in this year's championship here. Huge one in, fisted down dangerously, could have got anywhere. Peter McDonald was on his way. In once again, Owen Mulligan challenging. Over there as well, however, is Aiden Fell. Noel Garvin's just ahead. Garvin picking it up here. 
back in the general direction once again of Gary Cavanaugh. Ross Monnelly leaving it there for Chris Conway. Leash mounting another serious attack. But they're out around the perimeter, around 45 metres out. Brian McCormack having a go. Oh, it was a brave option, but he was committed to the kick patch here. Took the responsibility, fully 45 metres out. Win supported, right over the bar. Taking it to himself. Mulligan, ever the stylist. Quick little layoff here to Mellon once again there. Intricate in their movement, maybe over-elaborating. Finally, it's Mulgrew, and he's put it to the left. Right, Owen Mulligan is very much the danger man, but he's playing deep in this first half. Penrose trying to apply pressure on Joe. Dangerous, and the referees, Russell has uh, blown. There was a throw, I think. Brave decision, courageous decision to bring him back, and how he justified that selection in the second match against Louth two weeks ago. Opportunity here, and he has put it over the bar. The Tyrone have settled quite well now, and they're, and they're back in the game, only two points in it. Trying to push his side into a three-point advantage after 25 minutes of play. Wonderful, precise kick. Really good difficulty over the last number of weeks. Cut out again there by Aidan Fennelly. Much more assured performance by... But it's anticipated well here by Mickey McGee. And left behind to Billy Sheehan. Supported here by Brian McCormack. Looking around, again, support available, but that's kicked wide. Once again, it's O'Neill, onto McCullough. Oh, he was trying to sell a dummy, gets away with it. Opportunity closed out here. Garber now once again, this time in towards Bina McDonald. Better ball, but it spills from him. Rega One point so far in the match, kicking high, but kicking to the left so far with six wides but they've got another chance here now need something from Chris Conway two Tyrone backs out there to mark him well he kicked under a certain amount of pressure and he's kicked the chance away wrong play by Sean Cavanaugh Mulligan two of the big names that they look to time and again another is Philip Jordan here oh, he hit his boot his opposite number with Tyrone to make it into the next round of the championship. Half-time score. Aid of the breeze. Rain has continued to pour down here. So second half gets underway. Three between them. And it's Noel Garvin and the rest of the Leash team now bidding to stay in this year's championship. At the end of a campaign, perhaps, where Mick O'Dwyer, age 70 years of age, might well be heading for pastures new after this. He's intimated that that will happen anyway at the end of the season, but will the season end for Leash here this afternoon? Tyrone with ideas of their own about making progress. Gary Cavanaugh straight away now, trying to set something up. It's tight, highly competitive, and in the end, Billy Sheehan deemed to have travelled. And because they protested the decision, Tyrone are penalised 13 metres, so it's now practically out of their own 45 metre line. Now, how will they use the breeze? Philip Jordan going laterally initially, at least, to Cormac McGinley from Erigel Kieroin. Ryan McMenamin tracking back there. Kala, Kevin Hughes going forward. He got the first point of the first half. Looking for... Certainly will. Doesn't quite make it. Still, there's an opportunity, however. Comes back towards Brian Bina McDonald and be part of both teams. Garvin inside towards Russ Monnelly, back towards Garvin again. Little off balance, no great direction in it. No, but nicely into space here. Ross Monnelly. Bino was kicking it. It's John Dub again. They try and work it. This is drilled outside Conway. Brendan Quigley, that's more encouraging by Leash in the second half. Billy Sheehan taking it forward. Sheehan is 20 metres out. In the end, he wins a free. And uh, Philip Jordan getting in there, exchanging angry words and gestures, and uh, hands reaching towards necks. Billy, Brian McCormack there, and fingers pointing in the direction of players right, left and centre. And in the end, Ryan McMenamin is called aside by the match referee. In for Leash. Chris Conway to take. Toronto about to make another change. 
Conway has kicked it over the bar. It's the first point. Marley's kill Cruz player. Nicely over the bar. Eric McMahon for Bally Rowan. Bino reaching. Cormac McGinley's there. And McGinley. Top. And that's kicked by Mulligan. And he's put the ball wide. Again, the support player over there, McDonald, racing ahead here, Conway, challenged there by Davy Hart, back picking it up is Russ Monnelly. From the end line all the way back, as far as Billy Sheehan, has it again from that free kick. Back to Chris Conway, running into traffic. Back it comes once more, spills to a to have it again, and it's Porik McMahon in the swirling breeze, getting it in towards Bino. Bounces off it, back to Cavan, it comes again, across here towards Philip Jordan. They work it towards Stephen O'Neill. Breeze behind him now. Fielded with... Cons Owen Mulligan, ready to kick. Good follow-through. Good direction as well, and it's a white flag for Tyrone. The leash players running into Tom Kelly. It spills away to Joe Higgins. Lovely footwork by Higgins to Chris Conway. Oh, it's like stars on ice here. We haven't ice, but we've certainly got everything else weather-wise. Tries to once again work it in, but look at the Tyrone players surrounding him. Picked off the ground, I thought. Still, they work it forward. They're now 20 metres out, and in the end, get ahead here to Russ Monnelly. Wonderfully stylish player, usually, as you've heard, hampered by injury this season to some extent. Torek McMahon making good headway. He's got a player inside. Kavanagh. Spring it loose here, Quigley just getting a vital touch on it. Coming in next is Brian McCormack. Well, it'll suit a left footed kicker if he can get it back on his left, but the backs knew that. Freed inside here towards Billy Sheehan, right on the end line, under pressure. And John Devine was really under enormous pressure. It's put over the bar. It's a here. Billy Sheehan coming in on the end line. Goalkeeper having to touch it over his own crossbar. Credit will go to Billy Sheehan, I think. He had two points before that, I think we should make it three. Line. Still very kickable from that distance with the breeze. The gale is behind him. It's beautifully over the bar. It's a wonderful, accurate kick from last year's Footballer of the Year. A huge one, landed perfectly. And now they're passing. Everybody backing up in support. Good, easy passes to Chris Conway this time. Nothing silly, no ball given away. They're fighting hard, carrying the fight to the champions. Still, they get it up to it towards Ross Munnelly. Munnelly bottled up over there by the new man in, who is Dermot Carlin. He knew what he was trying to get. And there's a very, very difficult kick ahead of him here. It's a very tricky angle shot. Three between them at this stage. He's let fly. Listen to the crowd. That ball has gone wide because the cheers are two per team. It's a mad scramble for safety, for progress. Noel Garvin in here as far as Brian MacDonald. Bino spills away, lost Goal. and regained. Here's an opportunity, and John Devine makes a wonderful save. It's gone for a four. Tyrone right now. And once again, they go to Brian McCormack. Uh, again, there's an opportunity here with Jordan across to McCullough. A point will do on this occasion here, and he's put it over the bar to narrow the gap. Tyrone will have to work even harder. Again, it's held up here. Ian Fitzgerald, supported here by Tom Kelly. Looking around, trying to play the safe ball into space. A lot of work for Bino to be taken. This time they go long, sensibly down towards Stephen O'Neill. It breaks here towards Sean Kavanagh. Kavanagh trying to wrestle away there from the men who were marking him. Not one, two, three or four players trying to get the ball at least win it back again. What a performance this is. They were down and out against the Dubs just two weeks ago. They've come back so strongly here in very inclement conditions on their own patch in Port Leisha. And still they're holding and holding Billy Sheehan with uh, Tyrone trying to chase after shadows and trying to win the ball back, all in vain so far. Still, they try to waste up and use up as much time as possible. Fitzgerald once again, all Tyrone can do is run after them, try to get the ball back. They can't get near them so far. 68 minutes are gone, Fitzgerald dodging into the clear. There's an opening here, there's a chance of a score. And Lisa got it, and it's Chris Kicks. 
another score for Chris Conway. And so now, three points the margin. Such an important kick. Another two minutes to be played after this. The referee didn't play the full three, mind you, at the end of the first half. Is it Leisha's day? It drops short. Again, and Tyrone, the ninth, the 2005 champions, are out. And it's Leash who live on and go to round three of the qualifiers. They had a three-point victory. They showed spirit and determination, lots and lots of class and skill. Tyrone were magnificent champions. Everybody will have enjoyed what they produced over last year in particular. But this points, Tyrone six. Let's go down to Marty Morrissey. Marty. They, um, they had did, um, with the breeze in the first half. Um, and 6-3 you know, wasn't the greatest of lead on the score. But it was much better than that because they played with a good lot of control. Our first half. Well, we tried hard, there wasn't much control about it. In the second half we felt, well, three points, you probably could get that back, but uh, Leash played twice as good in the second half as they did in the first. And I have to hand it to them, they played controlled football and they're very worthy winners today and I just took my hat off to them. I know that you've been badly hit with injuries as well, but it's so difficult, isn't it, to put two All-Irelands back to back? Well, there it goes, it's now 16 years, no one has done it. Um, it is very difficult, injuries do, do not help along the way. But, um, you know, we played as well as we're allowed to play today. I said, uh, coming into this game, that Leash weren't the team that they showed against Dublin. They are much better than that. They played like a real Leash team here today, and that's why they're through the next round of the qualifiers and we're out.